Justin Money, owner of Detective Coatings, uses project management software to help him track leads and organize his workflow in his fast growing shop. I sit down with him to discuss better ways to do this both digitally and manually, no matter what stage your business is in. He shows us how he categorizes jobs in QuickBooks to track income, and I show you how to determine when it's a good time to transition from garage to commercial. There are lots of freebies, bonuses, and discount codes in this not to be missed episode of the Powder Coder Podcast. Get ready to level up your powder coder game. Justin? Yep. Can you hear me? Yeah. Hi. How are you? you see me too or not yet? Not yet. There we go. Hey. First time using Zoom. <laughs> yeah, no worries. You look great. You're in your shop. Yeah, got to <laughs> put a new burner in the oven. I feel like Ross. <laughs> <laughs> he was just doing that. Oh God, yeah. Never in. <laughs> I I dread having if if we ever have to move again. I dread it. <laughs> yeah, I say the same. Knowing what I know now. Yeah, it, it's a lot of time and a lot of money and you, de yeah. you definitely have to be outgrowing what you currently have. Yeah, it, it's it's scary out there. Um, I, uh, it's scary out there. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You never know what's going to Politically, economically, it's, yeah. Yeah, don't want to get in the middle of it and something happen. Yeah. Not a quick procedure. <laughs> right, exactly. So, oh, I see you've got a small, uh, do you have more than one oven? Yeah, I got uh, the small, that's a Ted's Fab, the small one there. I yeah. love to get out of Yee. Ted's Fab oven. <laughs> um, then the other one's kind of home built. It's six by six by eight. Yeah. That, that's what I'm getting to put the Carlin burner in now. Yeah. That's a nice size. Uh, we'd like to put a size like that, maybe just slightly bigger because Every now and then we've got a contractor job that's just too small for the large, super yep. large oven and too too big for the small oven. So I I I I can understand the advantages to having multiple ovens. Um, yeah. it it really a site, you know, if you can afford the space, that is, uh, it's really where you need to be as a custom coder because you 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 can uh, monitor your expenses and overhead by that. And um, you can give your customers a, a fair and honest price. Yeah, absolutely. That's, uh, I've thought about getting another one about this size because it's like perfect for wheels and that so that yeah. you got room to fit all four of them in there at once comfortably. Uh, and it's, you know, I can do majority of automotive stuff like aside from a frame or anything like that, like, and same with production work, it works really good for the sizing of it. Yeah. But obviously it'd always be nice to have bigger, but for yeah. what we've been doing, it's, it's ideal. Yeah. We like Ted's fabs. We're Ted, yeah. we're Ted fans. Yep. Me too. It's, uh, I plan on getting another one soon because we're getting more into the Saracota firearms and stuff. So yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah. Too. Just because, it, you know, as like small custom jobs, it takes up a lot of oven time for small little parts. And when you got 20 different jobs to do and you could coat them all in one day, but you run out of oven time and it's like, damn it, we need another one. Yeah, right. Yeah, wow. Well, that's good for you. We, we decided not to get into that side of the business. Um, yeah. It's very detailed and you almost need to just you know, focus on that or have someone dedicated to that. Yep. So good for you. Yeah, um, that's what I'm leaning towards is one person dedicated to doing that coding because it is, it's very detailed and yeah. particular and you have to know them pretty inside and out and along with the laws along yeah. with it. Yeah, yeah, exactly. You know, but it's, uh, I have a feeling it's going to be a booming business. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's for sure. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, 
Here's to our new president. Yeah. <laughs> uh, okay, so I'm uh, trying to pull up the links and stuff, and thank you for that one link. Uh, I didn't get too much time to uh, get into it, but what I saw amazed me. <laughs> yeah. Now, before we get started too much, uh, do you know this guy that's designed this? How did you stumble Not upon this? Personally, um, so we've been using another program called My Shop Assist, and it's more okay. like automotive based, but I kind of reconfigured it to work for us because I wanted the track time on jobs, like how much time, you know, basically a start and stop timer um, for employees Good. so that I can mm -hmm. build the customer properly. You know, if a job, took a lot longer than what I was anticipating. I can eat it that one time where I, you know, charge the customer what I estimated, but the next time for, you know, future jobs, I know how to predict better, you know, how much time is actually going into it, where most of it, you know, you look at a part and you're just estimating, like, as we all say, guesstimating what's gonna be the time. And then you end up eating it on a bunch of jobs. And 90% so we of the time, right? Yeah. 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 We were using that program for probably five years and mm -hmm. there were, I always wanted more from it. And right. um, this new program, the to do desk offers it. And it's one I would looked into on and off probably the past two years. And I'd talked with Martin, the owner, and then the, it, it always became the time of transitioning from one system to the other. It, it, yeah. I, I thought it was going to be very time intensive because the initial setup with the first program was, and it was actually a super easy transition. Well, that's good to other. know. Yeah. I think, I think if it was somebody just first starting out with any type of job management software, it might be a little tough um, right. just getting used to the navigation and those kind of things. But uh, yeah, I don't know him, you know, personally or anything like that. It was just, uh, he had been checking back in with me every couple months, seeing if now's the time. And mm -hmm. then the timing just finally worked out to switch over. Yeah. Um, I guess what I should probably do is pull up that, uh, pull up that link you sent me. Mm -hmm. Um, so let me go there. I won't share my screen just yet, but we'll keep talking. Um, so why don't while I'm pulling that up, why don't you tell people a little bit about who you are, what company you own, and uh, you know your background? Yeah. So my name's Justin Money. I own Detective Coding and have been in business since 2013. Uh, I started coding in 2008 going into 2009 just picked it up as a hobby is restoring a car had no intentions of a business whatsoever I was in college at the time for criminal justice which is kind of where the name comes from a lot of people ask where is detective coding come from and it was I was going to school for criminal justice but it also my last name gets mispronounced as Mahoney all the time and the movie Police Academy has a detective Mahoney so in college, everybody started calling me detective instead of calling me Mahoney. So that, that just kind of carried over as a nickname from college and transitioned into the company. <laughs> I love that. Yeah, it's super random, but it, it would always work out. Um, okay, I'm just pulling up the last of my stuff here. Um, so you specialize in what oh brake calipers for sure um we do probably about 100 sets or so a year that we powder coat and rebuild them um and it's custom tailored to whatever the customer wants as far as add-ons you know with leaders and new pistons and it's definitely an industry that i've learned inside and out of everything that a customer wants and you know getting a new caliper because we stock cores so that they don't even have downtime. They just order right. what we have, send it out to them and they send their old crusty, dirty, nasty ones back to us to refinish for the next person. Yeah. And I, I'm going to bring this up because I know um, lots of people have 
suffered from the consequences of using the B word. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. um, that was fun. <laughs> <laughs> and I didn't know that you were part of that, but I, you know, I know of a few handful of others that have suffered from using the B word uh, yeah. when you're um, redoing brake calipers. Mm -hmm. uh, why don't you tell us that story briefly? Um, and just so that, you know, without naming names, but yeah, <laughs> uh, <laughs> it was uh, uh, one morning, got up checking my email and saw had like a hundred and some new emails and every <laughs> couple of minutes, like six or seven more come up of flag notices on our website of uh, somebody, Oh, it's on your website too? Yeah, they, they were claiming copyright. Uh, oh our pictures and that we basically had a cease and desist from using their name to promote their product and essentially what it boils down to is they want you to buy a new one instead of having it refurbished and like i always say if, if they would have done their painting and coating correctly from the manufacturer then they wouldn't have this problem but yeah. since the clear coat starts peeling off after two years on a brand new car it's kind of hard not to and yeah, so it became a, an ordeal of basically you can fight them and you could probably win this argument of, you know, you're not restoration. Uh, selling yeah. it as their product. It's restoration and that's it. But yeah, I figured the fight wasn't worth it. And we just removed the pictures from our site and we still put the logo on the calibers like customers want and yeah you're just not uh, mad you're not posting it or talking yeah. about it yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. that it, seems it, like a, a a good solution i mean i don't know i think it's a dick move but absolutely. Um, and 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 who's to say i mean when i started looking into this they were just like if anything they have more of a problem like in southeast asia and all the the third mm -hmm. world doing ripping them off than they do in america which you know i don't know it yeah just... that, that was like part of their reason concern was counterfeiting it's like obviously these aren't counterfeits you know they're coming right off a customer's car that they sold to the manufacturer of the car and yeah. they just wanted no affiliation with any other company and and yeah, just, it, it could have taken a different, uh, uh, more of a, rather than a defensive move, they could have taken more of a go with the flow move. And mm -hmm. uh, they just decided to stand and fight. And I'm like, I, I don't, I don't get it. But you know, we're not them. So yeah, whatever. You, you would think, I mean, if I was looking at it from their point of view, is kind of how I put myself. It's like, I would want to work with these people that are doing like, yeah, if what, anything, it just gets your name out more. Yeah, exactly. Like promote our brand. You could also include our pads and rotors, you know, like you could be a wholesaler for us, all this different kind of avenues, but instead they pay somebody to sit on social media and flag their post all day long. <sighs> Seems like a waste of money. <laughs> it, it does. It totally does. You know, it's amazing. These big corporations and what they, what they think about social media and what they, don't understand about it or whatever. Yeah. So, okay, so let's introduce uh, the, so basically we're gonna make it clear that you are just a customer of this yeah. uh, type of um, management software. And it is, it's, is it like QuickBooks in the sense that it invoices too or? Yeah, it, okay. it does invoice. Um, and I've only been using this software for about a month now, so I'm not okay. super fluid with it and know all of its ins and outs. I just know it's it's more capable than I need, yeah. uh, which is awesome. Well, that's great because you can grow into it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, let Am me I share the screen share with you. Uh, you I are. Have... Awesome. Yes, um, let me figure that out. Okay. I'll, I'll just open that up. Uh, all participants. Okay. Um, and, but before we, uh, you share, let me share the screen, uh, the website okay. so that we get familiar with that. And then, um, oh, hold on. I need to, 
get on that page. Before I share it, here we go. Okay, can you see? Can you see that? Okay. Yep. Um, so it's called to to do. How do you say it? <laughs> yeah, I say to do desk. I, to I do. think that's how he pronounces it. To do desk, and it's kind of funny because they're not all about the logo. It's kind of tiny, right up at the yeah. top here. Yeah, I actually um, wish it was uh, bolder because when you're looking at it in Google Chrome at your tabs up top, it it doesn't really catch my eye, and I yeah. I prefer it did, like you know a bright green or something to. Something. No. It's an understated logo for sure. But that could lead into why they are more about the software than their their self-image, right? So mm -hmm. that, that's not necessarily a bad thing. We don't know. Um, but their call to action above the fold is pretty good. It's just try it for free. Yeah. Um, and, you know, of course, the line is pretty, you know, repair workshop manufacturing. I mean, that's just, they know who their customer is. Yeah. And it does say uh, for those that are listing, listening, um, instead of watching, um, uh, they do estimating, invoicing, job management, shipping, communication, and support platform that powers uh, workshops worldwide. So that that's very powerful statement. Um, and stuff. And of course they have the little, like when you're on their support desk, I love this program that they, I forgot the name of it, but it pops up and you can ask a question. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So, live support, whatever. Um, so let's just scroll down on the home screen. Can you, you can see me scrolling, right? Yep. Um, so you can get more leads. That's a grabber line. Um, increase sales, ship more jobs, and win happier cu customers. Do you do a lot of shipping of the brake calipers? Yeah, uh, I'd say primarily. It's probably about 80% of it that we ship out. Okay. 20% is local. Yeah, and this was, this is, when I saw this on my phone this morning, I was just like, oh, yeah. This is, <laughs> right this is up. what, yep. This is they get it because yeah. I'm always telling Ross take pictures before, during, after, whatever, and it it helps you in so many different ways. So if you guys aren't doing before and after shot shots shots for you know, I mean, a lot of people do it just for the social media value, but I'm telling you there there is more reasons to do this in restoration even when you're doing new jobs or new custom fabs, uh, it's always, always good to uh, document everything. And a good exa <clears throat> example of that, recently we had a job come to us um, and the customer had to come down and approve the um, custom fab, it was a railing. And after we were done sandblasting it, <clears throat> Um, you know, he, he first he inspected it before we blasted it and he was like, well, there's some scratches in the surface. I said, don't worry about that. Those, you know, the it's aluminum and the minute we blast it, it that you're not even going to see those scratches. They're just going to be gone. So he said, OK, so we went to blasting it. We spent, I don't know, five hours blasting it. And he came back after that and it was only until we was laying there flat in the blast room did we notice or he noticed that the railing was crooked the mm -hmm. the bar the spreader bar whatever was crooked and I, you wouldn't have noticed it until it was blasted anyway so i mean the whole job went on hold after that uh, but we could have documented all of those trouble areas and 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 protected ourselves mm -hmm. and uh, protected our client and, uh, you know, it documented everything. So I think when I started seeing this visual stuff happening, I was just like, oh, yeah, this is it. Yeah, that's that's exactly why I document everything. Like when it when jobs come in, we spread it out on the floor so you can see everything from the big parts down to the little ones and you get an inventory count of, you know, if you got 56 parts there, yeah, that goes into inventory that way, you know, when the customer comes yeah. back and says, hey, I...
Uh oh, we lost connection. Are you there, Justin? Over some oh, sorry, you cut out there. Can yeah, you repeat so, what you just said? Yeah, uh, I was just saying with the uh, documentation of spreading everything out to make sure you get photographs of every little part because some person could come back and tell you that they dropped off something when they actually had it. And instead of, you know, that kind of he said, she said type argument of going back and forth with them, yeah. you can just show them the picture and yeah. it, it's cut and dry right there. Yeah. I, I'm i glad that you're one of those that values that uh, because it's so vitally important and we need to do a lot more better about it too. It seems like the navigation on this is actually pretty straightforward and and uh, user friendly, um, yeah. sort of like. And it's even got like, you know, a lot of the normal notification kind of stuff mm -hmm. at the top that people are getting used to these days. It seems like they've really done a pretty good job of the layout here, design. Um, so let's go into. So they've got. Uh, integrated messaging. So it connects. Do you use this part? Do I, I don't, but I could see where it's used. Um, like it, so say it's a pretty large shop of, you know, 10 people or whatever, and you got two people sandblasting and, you know, you got office people up front that you can communicate because you can have different uh, setup stations where you have a monitor or an iPad or what have you so that everybody can look at the job display system and you can get these messages back and forth of, you know, hold on this job be because of this so instead of having to have the employee or whoever run back and forth, you can just easily attach it there and yeah. it so much quicker. We use Slack. Uh, okay. But I have to admit, I'm I'm into it and Ross isn't. So uh, it does, um, I, I, I'd be interested to see what their integration uh, things are, what their integration APIs are, because that could definitely be a game changer too, especially if you, for what you said, if everybody's in a different room or doing different things, it's part of the whole project uh, workflow, that, that, that could be actually very valuable. Yeah, especially like the interruptions that are saved from that, you know, if, if you're in the office and having to run out to Ross that's in the middle of coding something to tell him, hey, on this next job or whatever, you know, yeah. when he goes to look at what's next on the list or when he goes to work on something tomorrow, it's already in there. So right. it's, it's communicating without uh, having to have that interruption and, and taking the time to get up and go out and tell him so as, as long as, you know, people are using it as it's intended and paying attention to it, then it's useful. But I know how a lot of people can be, it. You, you try it at first and then it starts to fall off. Well, I'll tell you, when we were in our older shop, the office was upstairs mm. and um, a customer would come in, but I wouldn't know. Now I get the cus I see the customer come because they come in into the, you know, they're, they're doing it the way I've always wanted it to be, which is just having a, a showroom, you know, so they come in more formally, whereas before we just had an open floor, right? Mm -hmm. And then the office was upstairs and every time I could see, like we had cameras and stuff, so I could see people coming in, but I couldn't see who they were or anything like that. Next thing I know, my husband's yelling my name, Kim, <laughs> mm -hmm. Kim. And I'm like, oh, God, if I have to hear him scream my name one more time to come downstairs and help the customer pick out a color, I'm going to scream. Yeah. And it, <laughs> it was like it was getting to the point where I was just like getting irate with him. Like and that was our messaging system. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I'm like over it. So yeah. happier that that's changed now. He's not screaming my name anymore. But uh <laughs> But that that's right there. And I can see why they put that right up at the front because at the top of this page, because like that's people get it, right? And messaging, like, oh my God, yeah. Improved communications, I'll take it, right? Yeah. Absolutely. Uh, now this is something that the contact management and the leads thing, I, you know, I'm a big proponent of that. We're still working our way to uh, being better about it. Um, 
We did write about it in our um, Build a Better Brand Coder uh, Industry Report last year. And um, we found out that 66% of custom coders do not track leads. No, uh, and have and yeah. and I yeah and they have no uh, uh, way to to track leads or manage leads and if this does that that's a huge win. Yeah, it's essentially on, on there. You can add um, in, instead of a new job, you can create a new lead instead and mm -hmm. document all of that. Also, we we do it in uh, I guess sort of a roundabout way with our phone call log and email, but there's not like one collective area. It's something that I just personally go through and I kind of know what might be coming in and, but there's nothing for me to really follow up past that. Yeah. Well, I can tell you, we use QuickBooks and uh, you have the only way to, you can create a new lead or you can, you know, that's the pretty much you have to manually do it. And of course, QuickBooks is for people that just do bookkeeping. Um, and so it has to kind of, you know, straddle more of the bookkeeping side rather than the lead management side. But I see that that, you know, I think that that's a big fault of QuickBooks to stay so static um, in the sense that they're not creating more fluid platforms. Right. They're only just trying to manage and improve what they have. Mm -hmm. And these other products that are coming out, uh, similar like this one and a few others, uh, just understand that there's more to a business than just adding and subtracting um, and stuff. So uh, uh, I'll get to that question later uh, in terms of the back end of management and um bookkeeping and stuff, but let's continue on because I think lead management and contact management is huge for job shops. Mm. Um, what, have you tried the live chat? No, I'm actually not a fan of it. Um, okay. I, I used it on my website in the past and it, it kind of, for me, it uh, sets an expectation to the customer of instant gratification. And That's true just with how our type of business works. Like, you know, it's not something on the shelf that you're going to get today. And, you know, it's with that, it's kind of like demanding an instant response or that's what they're expecting because, you know, these bigger corporations that have people sitting there right. all day applying to it, they can offer that to them of a, a response within 30 seconds or whatever. But when you're trying to do the operation of the business and try and reply to that, it, just didn't end up working out. Um, right. From some businesses, absolutely. That's a great thing to have. And I've definitely used it with many of them, but I think, I think for ours, it, it makes it tough unless you do have somebody in the office that's available all day long. Right. Exactly. Just at the desk or whatever. I mean, I have tried a live chat on my website. Um, it did get used. Uh, it was a code integration um, that I had installed. I still have it. I, t I turned it off because um, although I was personally available for it and it was through Facebook Messenger. So yeah. I would say if the live chat is affiliated with a, a messenger or some other kind of, you know, well, I don't know of any other kind of messenger seems to be it. Uh, you know, if it's a in-house live chat, I, I could see that being limited for most people. But if it was connected to Messenger, then maybe I just didn't see a lot of people using it enough to warrant it to stay on there um, for us because we're on the smaller side. But if you were kind of a, mm, I would say medium-sized shop, uh, that might actually be, it, it, again, it's just you could use it as a lead cultivation. You wouldn't necessarily have to have a chat, uh, but uh, but you could use it as a lead cultivation. Um, uh, how's their automated email system? That sounds interesting. You there? Yep. Uh, how's the, uh, have you tried any of the automated email stuff? 
No, I haven't. Um, I, I am familiar with it, and it, it's one of those that's tough to update customers like that because uh, yeah. you can do it that uh, you know that your job has been put in the queue, your job has been chemically stripped. You know, you, you can send right. them all these things, and it, it just adds a lot to it that is kind of unnecessary, in my opinion. Yeah. Uh, well, you're probably um, turning into job around faster than you could probably get an email out. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. You know, if you want to dedicate the end of the day to spend half an hour to an hour to doing that, but uh, I don't see it's worth. Yeah. I mean, pretty much the only automated email, I or I don't know if it's automated, but the email that we send out is pay me. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> pay me now. <laughs> and your job's ready, so pay me first before you even show yeah. up. <laughs> yeah. It's pretty much like what I, I do. I mean, I, it's not automated, but it's definitely, <laughs> uh, QuickBooks has the pay link finally now uh, that's integrated. It used mm -hmm. to have to email yourself uh, first, uh, and then get the link to pay and then include it in a separate email that you have to write. It, it was just, yeah. now it's, they've automatedly automate, they've, they've made it more prominent in their email system, which was a nice upgrade. Yeah. Um, so let's get into kind of more of the meat and potatoes of this, uh, projects, proposals, invoices, uh, stuff like that how do you find that this performs or what it, what's the process normally yeah so for us it's exactly what we've been looking for since using other job management software as far as being able to add the project all of the details that we need as far as the colors um any specific like special notes attached to it of having to tape off certain areas or yeah um it, and it makes it super easy for employees. That's the biggest benefit for me is that an employee can come look at this and know exactly what needs done. And it cuts down on the questions of, you know, how do you want me to prep this or um, what, you know, what color does this go in or, you know, anything or, or asking mm -hmm. uh, what, what do you want me to do next? You know, they might know what jobs are here, but they don't know, has it been outgassed yet or, is it ready to sandlot? You know, those kind yeah. of things. They can just come to this. And we, I have a big TV over my head right now that they just come up and they look at the screen and see what's on there and they know what to go to next. It's super fluid. Oh, wow. Really? That's nice. <laughs> yeah. I'd like to see a picture of that. Yeah. Um, so, okay, now we're getting into kind of more of the organization i'm not sure what this do you know what this part is um i think it's just kind of breaking down everything more power to like, cut yeah it's like reports or something yeah yeah th so that's on the home page when you're logged in is uh basically being able to see how many jobs you've booked on average over the past okay. month um, those kind of kind of basic reports really that I'm sure it can get, you know, more in depth. Uh, being I wouldn't want to see this report right now because we flatlined. <laughs> <laughs> but that's not my fault. That's the freaking state of Hawaii for you. Yeah. <laughs> Anyways, moving on. <laughs> oh, this is nice. Okay, so do you see this in your uh, leads that speak louder? So it's more lead stuff, stop losing business. What's this picture or are these just the um, scroll down. 1950 okay, so Cadillac front bumper? Yeah, so th those are the leads. I'm um, just showing you kind of how they're tracked okay. with all the embedment of the information that you're added in there into okay. one collection area. Let's see, we got look more professional oh i see so if you're bidding a big job or something yeah okay you can look good um get paid faster so i noticed that they got the okay so you can do uh general sales tax like we have excise tax here 
which mm -hmm. is different from a sales tax or a VAT, you know. I guess that would be our key thing there. Yeah, um, yeah, I know it's built into the invoicing that you can have whichever one you need on so yeah. that it automatically calculates it when you send the invoice. Yeah. How is there, how would you, I mean, you didn't have much to compare with before you got this, did you? I mean. Uh, yeah, we used a program called My Shop Assist. Okay. Um, and that has a lot of the same features as far as tracking jobs. Um, and, but it was more automotive based. So it was yeah, very so. Nice to make it work for me. I made it work for four or five years and it, it did the job, but not not as well as I needed it to. And this the job display system that this offers for employees made it worth the changeover because it's kind of right. like, like when you go to the hospital and you see the list of surgeries and which doctor and patient and what time they're going like, or if you go to McDonald's and you see which orders are up, you know, when the people are making food, like as they're in order, uh, two Big Macs, a double right. cheese, whatever, you know, the the guy on the grill knows exactly what to make next. And it's right. the same type of view. That's cool. That yeah. So, so nice. It, 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 it continues the robustness. I guess what I'm, I, with when you've got these leads coming in uh, and there can be overwhelming because there's so many at one time, it can lead to, I guess what it manages is the robustness, right? You know, so you've got a robust lead generation uh, marketing efforts and how does that, how does that system hold up to that? Sorry, you know? I lost your audio there. Oh, sorry. I was just saying that it continues the robustness of your lead and marketing efforts, you know, that this can handle that. Mm. uh through uh, so as things start to get busier you know we all have busier times than others and as things start to get busier people still can stay on track they can still they don't get lost or ask a million questions like i'm lost what do i do so this really i could see this translating into that yeah, uh, very that, nicely that, that's been a big issue with me with adding employees over the years is you know keeping them on track without me having to physically go there each and every time that you're moving they're moving on to the next job especially you know you have a bunch of stuff like smaller jobs that it's 10 minutes here and then five mm -hmm. minutes on the next job and instead of coming to your, your employer every time you can just look at this list and keep it moving mm -hmm. does it um how does it manage or does it manage um employee time uh, and, um, and payroll and stuff like that. So yeah, I don't believe it has anything for payroll as far as tracking hours. There may be, um, I haven't looked into it enough just because we have our own clock in, clock out. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Come up front. Um, and I'm, I need to look into more also of tracking time. We, we did that with the My Shop Assist where you could kind of have a start and stop timer with that so that you could bill accurately. Um, and it, it hasn't become as important to me the past couple of years, just because more experience you, you can, like you said, in the one podcast that Ross can just look at a pile of parts and tell you a price. And it's kind of the same thing, just experience. Um, but, you know, over, over the length of time, you know, if I have somebody else come in to do estimating, they don't really have, uh any yeah oh hold on we lost you again hold on are you there yeah. sorry we lost you again no. <laughs> um say it again uh with the if we were able to track the time uh, and I had somebody else come in to do the estimating, then they'd be able to have a database to look at to see actually how long stuff is taking so that they can do a better job estimating instead of just going off, a, you know, my experience of being able to look at a set of parts yeah. and have a good estimate of it. You know, the more data, the better in the end. That's why I'm a big proponent of all this stuff. Uh, 
the data management like this or QuickBooks or, you know, what have you, the, the more you can have the better, but you, you also don't want to micromanage it so small that it, yeah. it's just a jumble of information that you can't make sense out of it. I agree. I, uh, when I set up my QuickBooks, I made it too detailed. And mm -hmm. I think you and I were talking about that before, you know, and maybe what we can do is, uh, tell us a little bit just to go off topic just a little bit from this software is uh, what I mean in terms of categories and now we, we, we you might want to share your screen um, yeah. and stuff so let me get off here and uh, you might want to share like your experience and how you set up your categories or how you set up like do you have a separate item line item for calipers or uh, rims or uh, motorcycle parts or something like that? You know. Yeah. Yeah. So that, that's one that I was definitely doing too much in the beginning, where like for brake calipers, I would have. Hold on, your internet slowing down again. Where okay. I just have started. Start, it start again. Just, uh, start again. Sorry, cut out again. I don't know. Don't your know. internet's slow. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, like brake calipers, I would have that broken out way too much. Um, yeah. Where it would be 20 different subcategories of brake calipers. Um, yeah. So, you really couldn't get a good idea um, looking at that many categories. So, I've since move that down to just uh one category of just straight calipers um yeah but then in other instances i would just mark a job as powder cap. well right. it doesn't really tell you what industry that comes from so it was a, trying to figure out balance of what's needed um and what what information are, are you actually able to interpret into what industry is your most favorable this time of year so that you can market, you know, yeah. more towards that. And you're logging into uh, QuickBooks Online? Yeah. Yeah, I, I haven't made that switch yet. I, uh, I, I'm i still, I have some, reser some severe reservations about it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I can foresee that, that's for sure. Oh, yeah, like uh, you can see this where it's broken down, uh, yeah. you know, all different ones. And I no longer use these and I just keep it as straight calipers. Um, right. Right. So like this is one I like to use. But a lot. it's good to know, like, you know, Ross just does blast, sandblasting for people. He doesn't do the full like powder coating part. So, you know, yep. we could actually track you know, if we do that, and it seems like now that we've got this new lo newer location, people are just needing more blasting. Um, so w we have a separate category just for that. And we can actually track how many, you know, how much more we're doing this year versus other years uh, and stuff. We don't really like to do the blasting um, mm -hmm. just in and of itself. But, you know, if it's somebody we know or it seems like a good enough job that we'll do it, you know. Oh, yeah. um, so, you know, you can kind of control where the income com comes in and that doesn't necessarily equate, it's not necessarily done for taxes, but it is done for strategic planning, you know, and you can kind of see uh, where you, you could, um, um, it, it, you know, maybe you, you see a gap in the market and you're like, hey, we could go out for that more, you know. Uh, yeah and stuff exactly so, and that's mm -hmm. exactly what i use it for you know figuring out what time of the year certain industries are hot for us that if you want to focus more on marketing towards that mm -hmm. um i know i know on my end it seems like if uh if, if a certain industry is slow that time of year a lot of times it, it seems like no matter how much marketing you do it's just not that time of the year for people whether it's, you know, motorcycles in the middle of the summer, it's like, well, it's because they're out riding them. You got to wait till the fall or 
into the winter for them to start tearing them apart to bring to you. you know, they- yeah, exactly. Um, that's cool. So, so what, these are your, um, so yeah, you have these- furniture. Yeah. I can yeah. see that miscellaneous. Mm-hmm. Motorcycle. Mm-hmm. Shipping and packaging. Yeah. Yep. And then wheels. Wheels. Uh, kind of have it broken down so that it's you know not ceramic coating too much you can see you know which industry you're targeting basically because yeah before it was just way too much information all at once that you kind of yeah. make sense of it. yeah it does take some thought um I, it's I think it's definitely hard to narrow it down to it is you know, yeah it industry. is uh, first of all, if you're starting out, you don't know what kind of jobs you're going to get. Um, mm-hmm. I like that you put uh, when you bicycle, you have, but it's calipers. So like for bikes and stuff like that, um, are you keeping that under auto as well? Uh, the bikes? Mm-hmm. No, that, that goes under its own category of bicycles, just because we do um, a lot of, there's a couple companies around here that manufacture their own bicycles so okay i try and keep those separate because they can depending on the time of year they can pick up pretty good so i like to kind of see when their hot time is too yeah this is really important because this is what i wanted to talk to you this is why you reached out to me was Mm -hmm. trying to figure out like what are the necessary categories to category i don't even know if i'm saying it right categories but it's kind of like they're calling it um, uh, service detail or or transaction. It's not even a transaction. It's just like, what are your customers? You know, who do you think your customers are? Um, QuickBooks usually the only thing you can fall under is the the construction category. They don't. I think they might have an automotive category, but for whatever reason, I chose construction. Mm. Uh, to me, it seemed better than the automotive category they had um and uh you know it pre-populates a lot of this stuff for you so you don't have to do it but in the end you still have to customize it so it 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 actually was superfluous to the whole thing and how did this uh this is into it but the 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 to-do thing uh software did they pre-populate for you or he, so I had an initial consult with him for about an hour. He, so initially he gave me like a two months free trial because he's like, you know, I know this is what you need. Just whenever you get the time to give it a try, then it's open for you to start messing around with it. But mm-hmm. he'd kind of gone over everything with me, like a half hour to an hour long phone call where he just walked me through the navigation and how to add different tasks or how to add a new job all those kind of things and and they they even have like a how to on their website of you know every different thing that you want to know how to do on the platform you can just go there and it has like a step by step with picture breakdown yeah. of how to add stuff that's nice um well, i would say if you're just starting out um you know you should definitely have sandblasting as a separate category in case you have a separate order where you're just doing blasting for someone um you can still and then of course having a powder coating uh uh, category as well and then within that you you know if you wanted to if, if you do uh we kind of float in between um you know with the powder coating it's kind of more restoration uh is you can have uh the restoration or new um that's how i would do it now but sometimes when we're doing restoration we include the sandblasting and uh that can get kind of tricky uh so it's uh, we kind of float with the sandblasting because there's you know that ours is just you know straight up sandblasting that's all the guy wants he's going to go paint his part or whatever he's going to do with it and then we have sandblasting included in in and under that uh the powder coating category but we don't i don't know it's 
it's kind of hard because with rims, you know, it's all inclusive. So mm -hmm. you can't, it's hard to really uh, separate that out without getting detailed, I guess. Yeah, that, that's my struggle with it also. You know, yeah. there's some of those that they just have a set price of this is what it costs, you know, for everything for chemical stripping, you know, sanding out any dings in the wheels and sandblast. All, you know, you could break that down to every little line item of each task that you do. But mm -hmm. uh, again, it's one of those, is there a benefit to doing so aside from if it's as simple as you know like a railing that you're just sandblasting and then powder coating you might want to break that down just because of um you know a new railing that's raw aluminum or steel mm -hmm. that is a quick blast versus an older yeah. one restoring and you can then track you know how much time you have and it's a huge difference when it comes to that kind of stuff so you can't really price per foot you know you you don't want to average that out of new versus something that has 10 coats of paint on it right then unfair to the customer with new railing and the guy with the paint you're you're losing out on it yeah uh there's so much to do in the accounting side of business um so what should we talk about next i think i mean is there i guess we should probably talk about reports because with QuickBooks, um, you know, I can pull up a pretty, you know, my standard stock reports, which is uh, profit and loss, balance sheet, and cash flow. <clears throat> Those are the three main ones. Can you do that with this new software too? With uh, QuickBooks, the online? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Or, or, or with the uh, to-do tracks. It's, so this to-do one isn't really like a isn't necessarily accounting it just tracks the jobs it's not right, exactly. it doesn't have any integration with quickbooks yet or anything um it may i'll, I'll have to dig into that more i th mm -hmm. think it does but i don't want to say that for sure right uh, okay but yeah it's definitely more like a workflow management just to make sure you know you're you have it correct your what all your customers details are correct and then employees right. are able to keep moving with it and I can see even if you it doesn't have an integration or you don't get that integration, you still can bring a job from beginning to end and make sure that you don't forget to invoice for this, that, and the other thing, right? Yeah, you know, because exactly. there's lots of components and uh, things to do within every project and they're all different. Yeah. So that totally makes sense. Um, what are some of the hangups that you've had about the QuickBooks online? Because I have the desktop version. <laughs> uh, honestly, I mean, it's definitely more simplistic and definitely more like based around an app in a sense compared mm -hmm. to QuickBooks desktop. Uh, mm -hmm. I struggled with the desktop for a couple of years trying to learn it and make it work and I just could not do it. and. I finally switched over to the online and nobody me, ever promises that you can do it at QuickBooks. Yeah. <laughs> First of all, <laughs> <Nope>. <laughs> never believe that. <laughs> it's definitely a tough one to learn initially, especially when you go from, you know, a couple of small jobs a month and you're fine with just, you know, your, your PayPal transactions or whatever you have, you can just look at that and you're not too worried about bookkeeping, but then once it starts to get busy, you got to learn that stuff pretty quick. And it's definitely something to be on top of initially and yeah. get used to it because very quickly it, it becomes overwhelming that you got to keep up with the accounting. And it can be a lot of time throughout the week that you're just spending keeping up with those things, but it's one of those necessary evils. Yeah, it is. And uh, you know, right now, um, some job shops may be doing well. Uh, I hope and pray they are, and some are not. And we're one of the nots. And it, you know, it's always great to look at your books when you're doing, you know, giving yourself a pat on the back and you're doing great and everything. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but then when the, you know, what hits the fan, uh, yeah it's like oh i don't want to look at that that's <laughs> i already know it's going to be bad <laughs> that, that's the time that i spent when it is slow like that that's when i sit at home at night and just look through all the reports and yeah and figure out you know is there more i can do in a specific area and yeah uh, 
that's kind it's of the my- time to start digging deep and 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 start you know really trying to pivot or change or or innovate your business so that you can uh make it better i mean it's not the time to go put your head in the sand you know yeah. kind of thing and that's yeah. hard to do it really is yeah that's one of those you just have to constantly reevaluate you know the numbers the business everything or else it's it's going to become stagnant and you're not going to grow and if yeah. you're not growing you're dying as i say exactly and you know, I, as much as I don't want to bring politics in it, but mm-hmm. politics can affect our taxes, can affect mm-hmm. um, a lot of different, a lot of different things. Um, and uh, uh, I think one of the things, or one of the, I don't want to say negative aspects of having the QuickBooks online is fixing mistakes, or or is mm-hmm. there something like when there's yeah. How, can you explain that a little better? Because I don't use it. So yeah, it's it's tough. Um, it, it is very limited on fixing some of the mistakes. Like if you put something in the wrong account or whatever, if you make a bad journal entry of some sort, there's some of them that I can't fix on my end. But my accountant with their version, they can mm-hmm. change it. So I just move that whatever that transaction transaction is i just move it to the ask my accountant one and then <laughs> it's on them. thank god for that tab mm-hmm. <laughs> i've got handy. a whole uh yeah i've got a whole thing because i you know we moved and so i'm wondering if i should create a whole i created uh, well all the expenses that we uh, Home Depot runs, um, mm-hmm. you know, uh, special orders uh, for new equipment, everything I put under Home Depot, uh, under uh, Ask My Account, because I'm meeting him next week. And, uh, you know, he's like he said, he's got that software, he's got the accountant version, so he can just take all of those and create a mask if he wants to. And that's the question. I don't know if I should, if I'm, you know, what if, if I should separate the category or create a new category for that because it is kind of different than other expenses. So uh, I almost feel like it needs its own category, even if I ever never use it again. Um, Yeah, I'd agree with you there. That's kind of a moving cost. It's not really a job supplier. Yeah. And if I ever get audited, I've got to then now sort all of that out. Mm -hmm. It it just sounds like a nightmare. Um, And we have been audited. Um, back when we had our other business, not, not the powder coating business, um, but, uh, you know, we had to go through a mini audit, um, Mm -hmm. on some subcontract work. That's primarily what they were catching us on. And I managed to prove it, but, oh my gosh, it was just, you know, Um, had to break it down to the kindergarten level for them. You know, like (laughs) you had to do the work for them. They weren't going to dig through your books. You had to present it in like a golden, you know, (laughs) like file folder and here you go. And it's like A, B, A, B, you know, like it it was just, that's, that's what you have to understand with that. But, you know, it was, they ended up owing us money. So in the end, I guess it was (laughs) worth all the blood, sweat and tears to get through it. But, uh, and you always say, not with my recollection or not to my knowledge or yeah, yeah. whatever. <laughs> you, you do the Re- Ronald Reagan or the, what was it? Yeah, it was <laughs> Reagan <laughs> during the Iran-Contra trial. Not to my recollection. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you just kind of do that. But, um, well, this has been great. I What else do you want to... Um, because the you know I guess with the QuickBooks online is it it just grabs those uh, uh, it connects with your bank right and you can so at least you don't have all that data entry to do right right yeah that's a nice thing is it it just automatically transfers it you you do have to go through the list of transactions and make sure that, like you can set different rules um, mm-hmm. so that if it sees you know lows you know it's a job supply category right. so it'll automatically um dictate where that should go um right. but it's easy to verify it so if it's something that it doesn't recognize you know you can categorize it but you can batch a bunch of transactions at once so if you're like me and don't keep up with your books often enough 
then it, it makes it nice when you're going through 100 transactions and you can just flow through it because QuickBooks is automatically seeing, you know, this as a recurrence or you have right. a rule set up for it. So that, that integration is yeah. really nice. Now, do you have uh, do you have someone in the office currently uh, doing all this, or do you uh, have do, are you just like a one man band in the office, and then you have a bookkeeper that checks your work, or or and then you have an accountant? How does yeah, how do you have that? It's one man band, um, and then have my accountant check it all over um my sister is actually becoming a bookkeeper now so her and i have been kind of going over it that way i can show her what i've learned from it and she can work on some of the transactions mm -hmm. uh, just to, and i'm gonna end up having her just keep up with the bookkeeping side as far as adding the transactions and verifying them yeah uh, just because it, it is so time consuming especially during the busy seasons yeah. When you're already working, you know, 60, 70 hours a week and then you're right. trying to do books on top of it. They can get away from you. Uh, yeah, for sure. Mm -hmm. And, and then you don't know where you're at. And, and, you know, now do you have to call one of the worst things that I feel like as a QuickBooks user, um, especially desktop is if something does go run, God forbid you have to call them. Um, mm it seemed like it was okay right before COVID. And then, you know, cause they had their call center in the Philippines or one of their call centers was in the Philippines. Yeah. I'd always get that one. Yeah. Um, and those people were pretty pleasant and easy to work with and stuff. But it seems like once COVID happened, things kind of slowed down for them quite considerably. And they seem to have merged their call centers into one giant one. Um, rather than having them more regionally displaced, you know, kind of thing. So I dread calling QuickBooks. Um, <laughs> it can be a nightmare. Um, do you have to call them often with the QuickBooks online? No, fortunately, like uh, a lot of the stuff that you do need to find, you know, you can find on YouTube or their, okay. uh, their information thing that they have on their website. I, I try to resource those first. I, I think I've only had a call maybe twice and it was got through quick and figured out my mistake and okay. moved on. Now that might be a difference between the online and the desktop version. It just seems like any there's, we've had issues with um, software upgrades. We've had issues with merchant, uh, the merchant account section mm -hmm. more than likely lot of my problems have been through merchant account. Um, also had issues with uh, the account setting up, like when we first had the original account set up and mm -hmm. they still haven't managed to transfer because I started it with my company, which was the interior design remodeling company. And then when we switched full time to Maui Powder Works, that, 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 it, that they didn't like that. Like that mm -hmm. doesn't work. It, it's their account, the way they set up their accounts is just a little strange for me, but, um, you know, and it seems like the upgrades and the improvements kind of come on the slow side, although they're always doing, you know, fixing it, but yeah. um, it never ends. Yeah, it's like a new one that the online's come with as the cash flow. And it, it's kind of like, you know, your general report that you can generate. Um, mm -hmm. But it, it seems like they're building on that side of things, which is really nice to see. But right now it's super preschoolish, like it's it's very, very generic. Yeah. Uh, but it, it's one of those you can tell that's that's their next thing that they're going to tackle is focusing heavy on that. Mm -hmm. So uh, how much do you pay for the QuickBooks online and how much do you pay if you don't mind me asking? Oh, how much do you pay for that to do software? So the QuickBooks Online, I believe, is thirty-five a month, mm -hmm. uh, thirty-five or forty a month, some, somewhere around there. Um, and the To Do Desk, uh, Martin actually offered. I talked to him about how, that. I was going to be talking to you about this, and mm -hmm. he said, uh, hey, "What is it? One." Oh, you cut out.
$129 for the entire year, which is... Wait, say it again, because it cut out. Uh, it, it'd be $129 for the whole year if you're one user with uh, under 50 jobs a month to input, which is... What? Just that as sounds... much as I was paying a month for the previous software I was using. And yeah, that, and he that's also, a nice price. Yeah. And he also said he'd do a 20 minute consult with anybody. Um, so that there's, in my opinion, really no reason not to give it a try except finding the time to sit down and do it. But right. You know, spending so maybe we should do a shout out and say, mention Ross Coat or something and they'll get that deal or. How yeah, yeah. Just tell them that you know you heard about it on the podcast with Ross Coat or heard okay. it from Justin at Detective Coding. Either or. Um, yeah. He, Martin's well aware of it, and I've talked. Oh, to that's him. great! Thank you for doing that. That was yeah. very nice of you to. Absolutely. Talk. That's. I mean, I get nothing out of it. it it's something I, I know the industry needs. Um, yeah, just, we're just sharing. You know, exactly. Just, you know, using Excel or using uh, an Inventor, and yeah. it's you know. I, I, I'd like the industry to transform more to like a uh, paint and body shops where, you know, they're able to estimate jobs very precisely. And, you know, the employees are working at like a 95% efficiency, which is similar to like car dealerships working in that. And I, I know for a fact, like our industry is well below 50% efficiency, right. you know, as far as build time and, you know, it's, a lot of it's due to the hobbyist aspect of the industry, which gets a lot of people into it. It got me into it, um, but making that switch to, you know, this is a professional business and, you know, if this is something you want to do for a career, you, you have to get serious about it. And that's just one more way, you know, there's all kinds of aspects of, you know, getting into the business side of things, but this is just one small part of it, but can be huge in making sure that you're um, getting all the details right for customers and making a profit on it and not losing your ass on every job. Yeah, and who knows? I mean, if he gets enough clients uh, on that software, such a reasonable price, I don't know yeah. why not. Um, who knows? Maybe he can make some integrations into it or make some alterations or you know, uh, expand on the software to maybe uh, make it a little bit more customizable to uh, powder coating shops or small garage coders and stuff. I mean, let's face it, even it doesn't matter where you work, whether you consider it a, uh, a side hustle or a retirement cash flow or uh, um, or a full time business, it doesn't matter. Uh, it, we all need, we all have the same problems to solve, right? So it mm -hmm. uh, doesn't mean you can't take your side hustle a little bit more seriously uh, than, you know, uh, than it is now, or maybe, you know, I always say, hey, you know, you might be starting in your garage today, but tomorrow you might have a company of 10 employees 10 years from now, you know what I mean? And yeah. that's, that's where we, you know, we always try to prepare for that, right? Because somebody out there that's starting today will be there in 10 years, you know, so uh, uh, and uh, we were just talking. I was just had a meeting with our uh, uh, interview with another industry person here, and um, he said the party's just getting started, basically, mm -hmm. uh, for powder coatings, um, only because it's the, the earth needs more earth friendly products yeah. and finishes. Uh, basically, that's the bottom line. So if you're not getting into powder coating now, you'd be dumb if you weren't. So uh, uh, just because the upside is huge. And um, so uh, that's, this is great. I, I I think it's great that that guy offered us, you know, that he's aware that people might be calling about this. this that's awesome. Yeah. Um, Let me I'm going to, yeah, that. go ahead. I can show you the display system and everything. Mm hmm. That, yes, I'd like to see the live version of it. Yeah, I love it. It makes life so easy for me. So you're just pulling up, uh, what do you, uh, 
So you're just pulling up all your jobs. Yeah, so this is like the display system as they call it. Um, mm -hmm. So that you can see exactly. Oh, know, this is what your employees see. Yeah, th so this is what they see on the big TV. Um, That's nice. It's spread out a little more in some of this information, like the job ID. I like that, the due date in when it came in, yeah. Yeah, so, you know, and then it has the color codes for what jobs are, you know, coming up late or yeah. this one, you know, and then it, it's super simple as far as the category breakdown of what's ready to sandblast. And then my sandblaster can look at this list and know Golly, that's awesome. Available and they can go to work on them and same with the girl that does all the prep work. It's super fluid uh, knowing what's next. And then, you know, say he's done sandblasting, you can just bump the status. So it changes ah, it. Okay. You move it to the next one. That way they don't even have to communicate with each other. They just communicate through this and move right. it to the next thing in line. And then it'll move up, you know, if it's ready to powder coat, then the coder knows I'm good to coat this today. Mm -hmm. And then they can kind of build their daily list around it. Wow, that's nice. It's almost, it's like a Kanban board, but it's listed and Kanban boards are, are known more in the, um, software business or software development industry where you can move uh, things around. It's just a list version of it, but um, uh, but it, it also, uh, you know, is a it, same kind of thing. I mean, that's all they really need to see is what they're having to do, you know? Yep. Yeah, they don't um, need all the- They don't need all the other stuff. It, the other thing with that, um, so, the search bar over here on the left if you uh -huh. click on that it'll actually open the work order itself so that they can see okay the oh, it'll okay. be it of you know which part or you know what parts there are the picture that was taken when the parts were dropped off mm -hmm. uh, so if they need a little more detail instead of just the job name then they can go into that and mm -hmm. then again it's one of those that it saves them from coming to ask you or any bit of confusion because it's it's right there in front of them. Yeah, this is game changing. Now, yeah. how would you do um, an an estimate or it, how how would you would you how do you do that part of your business um, with the quick between QuickBooks and this and this uh, software? Um, so, kind of what I do. I mean, a lot of it's definitely just one of those experience driven like. You know this is about what the price is going to be um but within these jobs i'll pull one up here real quick to show you uh, so a customer can, comes in your shop mm -hmm. and they bring their rims or their calipers what happens next so the plus sign up here drops down this job check-in Mm -hmm. And this is where you can also add a lead. I just have the check-in part of it, um, mm -hmm. but you can add your leads and everything else in here to log the same, same information. Mm -hmm. um, but then just create a customer. Joe Schmo. <laughs> yeah, I'll, I'll just pick one that I already selected, but it, it'll open up this pop-down window so that you can add, you know, phone number and email mm -hmm. contact and everything else. Um, and then like the job title, I just keep fairly general. So I, I don't get into the spe specifics. Um, mm -hmm. I, I'll just put wheels is, uh, I can't type today. Um, just add wheels. Um, you can add a disc additional tasks to it. So if mm -hmm. say something is welded, you could add it. There. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. Right. And there it is. There we go. And then from there, you can get even more detailed. Yes. So that's the job you just created. Yeah. So this is essentially the work order that we're in now. So you have all your different tasks. Yeah. Um, nice. You may or may not use. 
um, mm -hmm. depending on the project. You know, if it doesn't need disassembled, mm -hmm. we have that, you know, mostly for the brake caliper stuff. Um, and then if their shipping is different, but this is where I had the inventory of, you know, how many parts are there and, you know, right. if it's a ton of parts, if it's 50 parts off a motorcycle, I'll, I'll kind of generalize, you know, 30 of them are brackets, but right. you, you can see the detail in the pictures. Um, and now down into the summary, here's where you can add the color of the job. Nice. And I'm still building the list of, right. of color, but you can select, you know, whichever powder it is, you can select multiple ones. Um, you know, so if it's a two-tone job or something that needs primer and then a chrome and then a candy color, you can add all that in there. Um, and that, that'll actually show up on the job display system so that the powder coder knows that, you know, these are the colors that need to go on it. Yeah, and that reminds me, I'm, I have like almost a paperwork or a paper template that I'll try to put up and share with everyone too, that if you can't afford uh, this very low price um, product, um, we've created one um, in the, uh, you know, we've created our own, which I'll share in a moment and I'm not gonna, uh, steal the floor yet but <laughs> if you can't then you can sign up and you know you can download the template and then take it to your printer mm. uh, and get it done uh, you know just add your logo or whatever um, but we'll share our PDF version of this I mean it's it's you know if you if you if you're not as busy as detective coatings you can you know create it we, we've just created our own because we had to solve the problem of this too um, and you know uh, it's a, you know, you can get a free template of it, but this is exactly what we're doing. This is exactly what we're writing uh, in our manual version, but it's so nice to have it already here and just uh, tracking, you know, yeah. and saving. Yeah. And then, okay, so, do, so does it go into pricing or just more? Because it's- Yeah, so here's where you can add the pricing. Um, yeah. And you, you can add products. So if you know your wheels are whatever, $50 a wheel, um, mm -hmm. not, but um, you can- God, I hope we're all making more than $50 a wheel. <laughs> <Exactly>. <laughs> Unless they're Kubota wheels. <laughs> um, you can just add that in and it'll default, um, kind of like QuickBooks, you know, when you, if you set up a, a line in there to be a certain price, or if you, whether it's your hourly rate or whatever. Yeah you can just add the item detail there and that'll pull it in. Um, and then you can build your pricing off that or the cost of different powders. You, you know, you could get very detailed with it, but I kind of advise against it. Just the, the time involved is not worth it. And it's hard to right. look at it all that way. Um, and then further down, you can add the, the terms of payment, uh, what, you know, some of us have net 30, net 90 customers. Mm -hmm. uh, and then, I like that sign. Go back up to that sign because you want your customer to uh, sign yeah. on the dotted line uh, so that they acknowledge that restoration is a variable. Yeah, yeah, it's not the straight estimate price. Right. Yeah, and you can message directly, to, you know, via email, or you can, if you have their phone number in there, you can actually send a text message to them. Nice. So, like for me, I I try my hardest not to use my personal cell phone for business. Um, yeah. Just in the past, I'd people call, you know, two o'clock in the morning. And, yeah. And, you know, uh, not realizing, you know, that this is a business and. Um, so now it's like, we don't text pictures to customers along the way or anything like that. So this allows you to have your personal privacy and still be able to do those functions that they appreciate and makes it easier too, if you just need to check with them on something real quick, um, yeah. instead of having them come by to look at it, you can send right. them a picture, they can okay it. And um, you can make templates, which is just makes it even faster. And 
Could you even do like a, a feedback review? Uh, I'm sure that could be integrated. I know he does have a thing that, which I haven't looked into yet, where it uh, will send an email a afterwards to mm -hmm. ask for a Google review or yeah. where you want it. The best kind is that I guess what I've read is the best type of review to get is immediately after they pay. Uh, yeah. um, I think uh, Square has that capability. Um, I don't use Square, but uh, it, it really should happen right there after they're done signing. It should just be rerouted to, but you know, in a perfect world, right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, you, you don't want to feel like you're forcing it on them either of, hey, give us a review right now. Right. <laughs> but, I you know, that is the emotional height of them, I'm sure, of being ecstatic that they got their parts back and um, that they're probably more likely to leave a review than, than they are a couple of days later when that um, that anxiousness of getting it and right. being ecstatic about it has worn off a bit. Yeah, because, uh, you know, when they get their project then back, then they're putting their project together and they don't have time to review you. But I was pleasantly surprised when I had set up an automated uh, uh, feedback review um, and out of, uh, I think, 200 emails that I sent, um, I got like 18 reviews and that's what boosted our reviews uh, through Google business page. That's mm. how we got, cause we only had like maybe 10 and mm. then I got a, like another nine on Google and a couple on you Yelp and just by sending them an email and it had been some time, like it was like six months later when I sent that review and I was amazed at how many people had actually clicked on those links and stuff. Hmm. That's pretty good. That's pretty good return on. That you know, was, yeah. They get reviews out of that. Mm -hmm. They are important. That's for sure. They are. Yeah. Um, okay. And then now you can add attachments. So that would be say the picture of the, of the job in yeah. the shop as you receive yep, well, it. Or any other documentation mm -hmm. that you need to add. What, you know, if it's a, like a production customer, if you need to add, um, drawings of the part so that right. uh, you can add all those on there too. Nice. I and like that. Check the that box that it's all complete and um, that, that'll basically update the status of it. And you, you can change the colors, colors around. Uh -huh. Yeah. So and we've talked about this. I haven't played around with it too much, but that way, if you know, if there's a job that's high priority, or mm. um, you know, something along those lines, or something that needs paused, you know, don't work on it any further because something else, you know, need customer right. approval or something that you can change around with colors to identify those kind of things. Well, that was pretty simple. Yeah, and it's got all the minimum things you need uh, to uh, to establish that, mm -hmm. you know, to get it started. Yeah, and you, you can add, like, the task up top here, you can add or remove different things as needed. Um, that's the nice thing about this is the ease of being able to contact him and or some of these be able to do yourself. And, mm -hmm. and have changes made so that it suits you and how your business operates. Um, and, and they have weekly meetings that they go over suggestions from current users of, you know, can we do this, you know, change these tabs around a different way um, to, to make it work better for our customer, you know? So I can get behind anybody with a software program that's willing to do that. That's awesome. Exactly. That that's what was great. Whereas the last program I use, it's you know, it's kind of their part time thing and mm -hmm. it, whereas this it's him full time and other employees that are working on the back end of this all the time. So it's it's constantly evolving. I like it. It's very fluid. 
from what I've seen, you know. Yeah. Um, and it's, you know, seems like it's the normal, the normal thing that, you know, like people are used to, you know, platform wise, you know. Yeah. That, that was my thing is just having it super easy to move it around that way. Any new employee can come in and look at it. And, and then again, with anybody new trying this out, it should be fairly easy. You know, the navigation might take a little bit of what's where and how to get there. Mm -hmm. um, but one, once you start adding a couple orders, it's super easy. Yeah, I like it. That's cool. And and to have it on a screen, that that's mm -hmm. I mean, that really, really helps people understand where they're supposed to be, what they're supposed to do. And, you know, in powder coating, there's a lot of downtime while you're waiting for things to coat. And instead of just sitting on their asses, you know, waiting for the cook to finish, uh, they could be setting up the next job or doing something else. And that's how you maintain that productivity. Cause I think there's a, that is a big issue. Um, mm -hmm. not so much for single coders and stuff like that. I mean, that's, uh, not the problem, but when you start having employees, that becomes an issue of keeping them busy and mm -hmm. getting your money's worth, uh, <laughs> you know, yeah. and that, is that alone right there is worth the what 129 or whatever that he's charging you for that that's just to keep people on task and you know get off the phone don't go back um, to facebook <laughs> yep. and, and that's another thing uh like adding in um subtasks as far as you know if garbages need taken out or dust collector needs emptied those kind of things exactly you, you can also add that type of stuff in there um so that they know, you know, if there's no job ready to powder coat or whatever, and they don't know how to sandblast or prep, then here's other A tasks. List. That yep. can run. Uh, yeah, for uh, on the employee aspect side of things, it's it helps tremendously. Yeah, it, it, you you should have a. I might even have a a document on that, um, like a checklist or something. I might pop that up there mm -hmm. on the the freebie uh, page too um, and stuff. Let me get, uh, I'm gonna get, take this off for a second so I can go reach over and grab my uh, estimate form and show huh. people too what we do if you yeah. can't afford uh, this uh, and stuff. So hold on just a second. All right. Um, and this might be coming out backwards, but you can kind of see up here forward. I if I can, it, it's just a form that I'm going to put up on the, um, website and yeah. it has all of those things that, um, you talked about, but in a manual way. Yeah. Um, and, uh, even down here, I've got this really long, like disclaimer, and then, of course, they have to sign and, and, and we have a hazmat thing and stuff like that. Uh, and it comes in. What's nice about it is it comes it has it's carbonated. Uh, what it, you know what I mean? Like carbon copy. Yep. Carbon cup. So then we give the customer the yellow page so that they know um, what they're getting into. And, you know, and then we can take their email address. And it's even got like a. Um, how did you hear about us thing? Um, and then there's even one for like your Instagram handle. If you want to give a shout out or do some kind of post, you know, you'll know what their Instagram, if they want to fill it out um, and stuff. So I will, um, I'm going to try to remove the, actually, I'll just leave it up there with my logo on there and stuff. And then they can take it to their, uh printer guy or whatever locally and they can get into the pdf and change all this other stuff i yeah, mean i don't see why this wouldn't work for any of us and all of us you know yeah, it looks like it covers everything that this online version covers just paper. yeah it's yeah a, it's even numbered too if you want to get it numbered you don't have to but they they've numbered it for me um, and stuff. And I printed about, uh, I want to say maybe a 500 of these for like 200 something dollars. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, 
that's a lot. And, um, you know, but, you know, you, you, you start paying someone to change your PDF and the, you know, and then the printing, you know, that that's more than what uh, the first year of that software is, you know, so um, that's, you know, something to think about. Um, but yeah, and then there's one other thing I wanted to share with you on this. So let me share my screen. Um, oh wait, hold on, let me bring up the document first. Uh, I discovered, and I'll put the link in the uh, podcast, but I found this a, a long time ago. Uh, it's actually for, it's a calculator. Hmm. And it's actually for, I think the photography industry which sounds like what, but it's um, the cost of doing business. Um, and I've been wanting to share this one for a long time because there are a lot of people that are kind of on that edge where they're like getting busy enough. Do I need to, do I need to stick, you know, continue to work from home or should I get a more commercial uh, space where I'm a little bit more accessible to the public a lot of counties don't like you working out of your home or they're very poo-poo about it uh, and stuff. So I, I like this calculator. I use it every now and then just to kind of keep track of where I'm at or what I'm our expenses and stuff. And it just it what what it does is it 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 allows you to see how much money will it take for me, how much money do I need to bring in in order to continue to work. Uh, and make money, right? You know, like what are my, and, and that's what I like best about it. Uh, let's see, um, let me share my screen and I'll put the link in there for the, for anybody that wants to click on this. See, it's for uh, visual journalists. So I'm assuming mm -hmm. photography, uh, but it, it's a really neat calculator. I have no idea how I came across it, um, but you can, these are all changeable and it just basically talks about your expenses like office, studio, uh, how much does your, and this is annualized here. So uh, you could do it by month. So you could just do, you know, your total, if it's just gonna do a monthly thing, you can just put it in. Obviously it doesn't cost me, uh, um, you know, uh, uh, that much in rent monthly, but, uh, you can change all of these. And then if you don't know what it is, like you can open it up and they'll explain what, so you just click on the little eye, a circle and information um, thing. And, you know, what I like about it is it talks about things that you don't normally think you would need or think about needing, like mm -hmm. uh, computer and software costs money. And so they've got that in there. Um, postage and shipping. I mean, they got that in there. Uh, vehicle expense, uh, business equipment and insurance. That's very important. You should always include that in your cost of doing this. So I've just kind of pre pre done these ahead of time just to kind of see what it would cost. And then it, it, what's neat about it is it has your desired annual salary. So you can put in a number like how much do you really want to make, you know, and then it tells you, uh, it can tell you what the results are is that you need to make this much money. Uh, oh no, these are your expenses. And this is your weekly cost of doing business. And this is your overhead each day. Mm -hmm. So there you go. If you're not bringing in a thousand dollars a day, you know, it, it's uh, you should be you, you shouldn't be you know so then now it makes sense because you're like well I can only do five hundred dollars a day well then don't go and get a commercial shop <laughs> you know mm -hmm. or commercial insurance or do do don't make this move yet until you know you can make that every day yeah you know uh, that's, that's a very good tool I mean I I do a very similar thing with printing out QuickBooks reports and looking at, you know, what it costs, you know, the, the overhead to run the business and know what sales goals we have to hit each week. 
in order to maintain or to be profitable or, you know, if it's a losing week. Um, yeah. So it makes it really good to re reflect. I'm going to have to use this because uh, I'm definitely tired of writing it down on pen and paper and yeah. getting my numbers all jumbled around where you can just input it straight from the QuickBooks report and mm -hmm. it calculates it for you. Yeah, I have hung on to this. Uh, well, this came out, looks like 2012. I probably have held on to this for about four or five years uh, just to don't ask me where I found it. I just was Googling or something and I it was like, yeah, hallelujah. This is something yeah. I've been waiting for. And I, I can't believe it's just tucked away on this website when it should just be more of like a general broad uh one there's another one that i use uh maybe when we get around to doing more technical marketing strategies and stuff like that later this year maybe we uh there's a calculator for that where it's the cost of uh, it basically um basically the cost of doing um the cost of acquisition is basically what you know it breaks it down and then how much of your dollars are getting for how much does it cost to bring in that customer kind of stuff uh it's all related to advertising and marketing and stuff like that which is kind of my more my my jam than than doing this uh financial stuff but uh i found that this very easy to use so i wanted to bring it up i'll pop it in the um in the episode and people can click on it and save it for themselves and um uh, I guess I'll just reference this. This is the um, the report, the Build a Better Brand report, um, and where it talks about what we found in the industry and what people are, uh, it's more marketing related, but it is about lead generation. We found out that a lot don't track leads, um, um, where people were coming and getting these leads, 91% uh, responded that referrals and word of mouth were where they were getting most of their customers. Um, and uh, uh, um, 30, both advertising and website came to 33%, uh, which could indicate that a growing trend upward in utilizing both ads, websites, and social media probably would be, is kind of a combination, which is why we've decided to, you know, create the coder biz dot com website to help those that need that extra boost with a website uh social media getting all of that going and um helping you boost ads and stuff like that so uh that's a new product that we've launched this year and um hopefully going to get more people uh into it and and you know because there are solutions to these powder coater problems right mm -hmm. Um, so I'll put this link. It's just a build a better brand powder coating. Um, you can just enter your email and you'll actually, when you sign up for this, you'll get access to all of our free reports. And I think we're going to come out with a new one this year. I, I don't really try to push myself to do certain amount every year, but when I see an interesting subject, like I think some of what we're going to be doing later is we're going to have another one. This also gets you into the survey. So once you sign up for this, then I think we add you to the survey taker. So it's kind of a way for the survey uh, participants are you, <laughs> you know, so it's a direct way for us to um, add you to that list so that you can help build this community uh, and participate it in in it in in in, in, in the surveys so that we kind of monitor the pulse of who we are, where we're going, uh, what our concerns are, what are we lacking in, and stuff like that. So I really uh, encourage you to sign up for this because uh, everybody can get the free reports and also participate in building the community um, to solve problems that we have in it. So. Um, with that, uh, it's been great. I mean, is there anything else we should talk about before we, I think we covered it all. We definitely covered a lot of detail there and 
I, I hope everybody is able to take something out of it and improve their business from it, you know, and just keep growing from that. Yeah. Now, how do people get a hold of you? Why don't you throw out your your uh, handles or your infos or your emails or whatever? I haven't been on social media too much lately. It's uh, one of those been uh, too busy, I guess. And uh, but at detectivecoding.com, same thing on Facebook and Instagram, just at Detective Coding. Uh, um, we're in Richmond, Virginia. So if anybody needs to call or has any questions about this software, try not to overload me, but uh, feel free to call me if you need any help with it. I, I don't mind giving you a hand getting started with it. Yeah. Yeah, that was really nice of that guy. And I'll, um, mm -hmm. if he wants to reach out to me, let me know um, or just share my info with him. And yeah. we can, uh, we'll definitely put the link in there. Um, you can just, if you do end up calling Martin, is it Martin? Yep, yeah, Martin. that's the guy's name. Um, just mention either Ross Coat Podcast or uh, Detective Coatings. And um, he looks like he's willing to work with you and stuff like that. That's awesome. I love, yeah. I love software developers that are willing to do that. Absolutely. Yeah. Awesome. Well, it was so great having you, Justin, and nice to meet you. Likewise. Thanks, Kim. All right. Have a great day. You too. Thanks. Bye.